about like fighting for fighting for what you believe in and fighting for your feelings and, and, and hanging on to the love that you feel instead of running away from it. <laughs> and, I mean, and, and that's a good, <laughs> no, that's a great concept of a way to describe the song and everything. But I was just, as you were talking, I was wondering how often has that happened, whether this album or other albums where you wrote the song in one form and then when the reviewers or the music people from the uh, different radio stations would play it, they had a different meaning or a different thought about it. So just out of curiosity, you've had a long career. It started in the late 90s and everything. So in the, what's that, the 20 years, uh, how often has that happened that you would write it one way and then they'd come back and be like, no, that's not what I was thinking? Well, I think that happens all the time, but I think that is just part and parcel of being an artist. And I think that you could get all bent out of shape about it. But look, if someone is reacting to it, and I think when you react to art, say like a, 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 a painting, right, it's going to elicit some feeling in one person and a different feeling in another person. And it has to do with their life. You know what I mean? Like their life experience. And, and what art is supposed to do is it's supposed to like make you feel. So, I mean, just because it has a very specific meaning the way I wrote it, if someone else's life experience is maybe they're in a, you know, a relationship that's not so good and they do want to get away and they're like, and they can use this to feel what they need to feel uh, to, to deal with that. Then I think that's cool. I mean, I, it's just like a dream, you know, like if you have a dream, right. it, you could explain in that dream 50 different ways. Like you could interpret it 50 different ways. Right. You could say, oh, well, the snake means <laughs> this or the, or the tree means this. And, and so I think songwriting is, is, is like that. And I'd like to leave some space in my songs where I can talk about what I think they mean to me. And even for me, my songs have a lot of different levels of meaning for myself. But I think that what I'm moving toward in my life uh, of songwriting is, is really more and more is, is my... Um, my, uh, um, I have a deal with God, you know, like right. you let me keep doing this and I'm going to help, I'm going to keep helping people feel feelings because that's what art is for, in my opinion. And I imagine, and I imagine that whether it's, and I don't know whether you consider yourself a Christian or not, but I imagine that spirituality, whether that's just being in tune with Mother Nature or whether that's some sort of grounded church kind of environment is also very important in your songwriting. Cause I know a lot of my friends that are musicians, they say that that's almost vital to their songwriting that they have to have some sort of ground grounding in something spiritual and may not be church based, but spiritual based. I think that all art is spiritual. I don't think art exists without the spiritual. I mean, I think product can exist, but I think real, and you know, I'm not, I mean, I'm doing the best that I can to 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 do my part as an artist. Uh, so I'm not saying like, oh, I'm all that, but I'm saying like, I think all the best art it comes straight from the source, you know. <laughs> like it doesn't. Right. We're just we're just letting it pass through us, you know. We're just lucky to let it pass through us and 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 be colored by our own experiences. Uh, so yeah, of course. Um, I mean, I'm sure there are people that don't think that way, but I, I can't not think that way because without, uh, you know, whatever you, how, however you want to look at it, if you want to say God or Jesus or how, whatever way you want to say, I mean, there's definitely a bigger thing going on with the muse and with the, with art, with the, with, with um, artistic expression. It isn't just, it isn't just a human. I I know this sound I I you know I'm out I'm sounding out there I guess but there, no 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 it's not very, it's not between it's not the it. divine and between um, humanity there's 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 a kind of a beauty in it that doesn't naturally exist uh, we need help us humans need help because <laughs> the muse is very much important in everything you just mentioned the muse and everything yeah. and I've dabbled in some creative creativity and I've got friends that are very creative. My dad is a uh, 
but photographic artist as well as uh, does some other forms of visual arts and everything. But um, cool. I'm just amazed. I'm just amazed sometimes that this creativity happens at like the uh, the weirdest hours. I don't think that artists of any medium have the most normal sleep schedule because, like you said, that yeah. news might hit you. That news might hit you at like <laughs> 2 a.m. or it might hit you at like uh, 5 p.m. in the evening after a a day job after if if you've gone the nine to five route. So it seems that yeah. the, the, the muse seems to be in control much more than us humans. Cause the muse just like will wake you up in the middle of the day and be like, uh, I think you need to write that down now. Now the thing that I'm oftentimes mm-hmm. amazed by is how often creative people, and I don't know how they do it, but can ignore the muse because sometimes people will get woken up or have a dream or some sort of inspiration. And rather than, leap up like I think most of the more creative people do and put it down on something, they'll just be like, ah, oh, that's all right, I'll get to it when I get to it, and then they'll wonder why they forgot it. Yeah, you never you, – you, I have slept with a recording device. Before I had a, a, you know, a phone, now it's really easy. I just leave my recorder, like, up on my dock so I can just – two taps, and I can just blah, 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 to my phone in the middle of the night if I have a dream or – you definitely – I definitely get a lot of – uh, a lot of my ideas in the middle of the night, and if I and I do stay up late when I'm writing. In fact, when I'm writing, I'm usually hardly sleeping. Um, that's why I kind of go into writing mode. I don't think I could live in writing mode because I'd probably go crazy for lack of sleep. But um, I think that it's important. You have to. You you can't tell. You can't tell the muse. Okay, now it's time. Let's do this now. <laughs> There's. It's 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 mysterious, you know, and uh, that's part of the the struggle, but it's also part of the beauty of it. And when the muse shows up, and that connection is there, it is a spiritual connection, and it's really, if you've ever experienced it, it's 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 just one of the most beautiful experiences I think that you can have in life. And I think that we keep chasing that. <laughs> once you have it because you're like I need for that to happen again you know <laughs> try to find ways to inspire it try to find ways to make it happen and sometimes it doesn't sometimes I think we might get into that habit of trying to force the music to come and I think the music is going to come on its own schedule and we can't actually dictate when that music is going to show up yeah one of my friends who's a really amazing photographer he said something to me a long time ago that still sticks with me because I had a young child and I was uh, trying to write my third record and I was just really struggling with, you know, time. Like when, you know, like I've got to have this time to do this and this time to do this. And he's like, Kim, he's like, you got to have like three days to just stare at the ceiling, you know, <laughs> because you have to get so unwound from your earthly life or just your, the, the, your day to it's very hard. That's why I think um, artistic people tend to live kind of outside of, uh, say, the regular world. We do stay up late. We do, uh, if we don't have to have nine to five jobs. I think it's really hard to have a nine to five. I mean, to be an artistic person, you, it, I think you have to do it full time. And and as you're saying, is, you know, sometimes it's harder and harder to make enough money to do that. And 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 in other countries, they give artists grants because they realize the how important arts are for the overall culture. Um, so, I don't know. Like, mm-hmm. I do think that sometimes when you get too wound up because you're trying to make the creative process happen, you just need to be in nature. This this you almost need to just do nothing for a while. And that's when you start opening up your vessel so that things can come in. You know what I mean? I don't know oh, if there's yeah, a million definitely. ways to get there, but yeah. Uh, and I wish that more people would do that kind of scholarship for the arts in our, in our country and definitely in the, I'm sure there are other countries as well, but I do know that there are other countries that, like you said, definitely do a better job of supporting their arts and actually subsidizing their arts. Whereas here, and I know it's definitely the case in LA, we have the stereotypical artists that are working at uh, McDonald's or Burger King or whatever the fast food restaurant is there or whatever the bar is because they have to do something to make their living or they wind up getting caught up in, uh, for lack of a better term, blue kind of movies just to pay their bills because they're trying to find a way to make some sort of living while they're 
pursuing whatever their art form is. Yeah, and it's it's hard. I I think there's just two problems. Uh, well, there's lots of problems, but there's two problems here that I'm thinking of, and one is there's just I think that I, I I don't really know how to say this, but I think there's just too many people trying to be famous or rich or something. You know what I mean? Right. Um, and that drives a lot of people to 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 move into these artistic fields. But I feel like they're not doing it for the you know to be an artist. They're doing it because you know everything in our culture right now is about. Uh, being famous or rich or showing how much how amazing you are on your social media and stuff like that and so it's like I I remember when I was a kid which was you know a little little bit back I'm not super old but you know when I was a kid it was okay to just be a regular person you know like you know what my father is a plumber and and he makes a, a living and uh, you know my mom I don't know it's a librarian or whatever, like all those normal parts of all those normal things that people would do in life were actually considered to be cool. And you had a, not, I don't mean cool, but I mean like, okay. And it was, it was okay to be middle-class or to, to be mm-hmm. like working toward being middle-class now. Like, it's like, Nobody is okay with that anymore. It's like, oh, oh no, I, unless I'm rich or famous, I'm a complete failure. And like, I think that it, that is totally taken over our culture. And that's part of the reason why there's too many people trying to be musicians right now. Too many people trying to be famous actors and actresses or influencers or all these things that we have. It's like some of y'all can just need to just, can't can't we just live a normal life can't we just like be with our families and go do fun things on the weekends and like you know like just be (laughs) do you know what i'm saying though yeah i definitely understand that because i even sometimes wonder and i'm curious what your thoughts on this is going to be if that doesn't become an issue we you mentioned earlier the popularity and the growing popularity of cover bands, and I agree, there are tons of cover bands now. They cover everything from the Beatles to the Jackson Fives to, I think there's one for Chicago. But they cover all kinds of yeah. different styles of yeah. music and everything. But a lot of times those bands are made up of, I think part of the reason the bands get in trouble is, yeah, as cover bands is that they're what I call half and half bands, meaning that half of the members of the band want to use the band as a vehicle to pursue a career, whether that's a career mm. and not necessarily fame, but a career, like make that their career. And the other half are for lack of a better term, hobbyists. They're doing it just as something to do yep. on the side for the weekend. Yep. And then that becomes right. a whole issue with that becomes a whole issue with the band because the band is sitting there going like, Look, I want to push my career and then the hobbyists are sitting there going like, Look, I'm perfectly fine coming here on Saturday and Sunday playing in whatever the towns are that are nearby and working, you know, my uh, insurance job Monday through Friday. And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, that's what opening bands are. Opening bands are the local bands that are in the town when you come, when the touring bands come through to play, that's normal. But this whole thing, and I'll just say this to any musician out there, stop covering songs. Just stop it because, (laughs) because you're taking up all the space for new things to happen and that's what that's why we have spotify and apple music and like everything available to us you know it's the easiest thing in the world to cover music anybody can do it uh really i mean seriously very little takes very little uh talent really to to be a cover band i'm sorry i mean yeah you you need to have to be able to play your instrument but i mean making new Material is is what art is. <laughs> I don't so know. I, I'm, so, 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 so I'm guessing you're not the biggest fan, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm guessing that you're probably not the biggest fan of um, open mics and of uh, those kind of like music competitions, because that's all they do is they're going to do cover music. They're going to do cover music of whatever those songs are, and I don't know how much uh, actual – training they're going to give not so much the jam sessions because we had john brown who's at duke and that's that's fun for like 
non-professionals, right? That's a thing that people do that just live in the town to go out and have some fun. That's not what I'm talking about. 